Awesome. Thank you very much. Uh, and obviously, good good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Crash Car Expert uh, session here. Uh, just with the raise of hands, right? Uh, so let, let me get a couple of things out of the way, and uh, that way it's just easier. So if you have any questions, I would rather wait till the uh, probably I'll take probably first 10 or 15 minutes to just walk you through some of the pieces. Uh, but then, you know, we'll open the floor up uh, as well as if you have questions, please raise your hands, put in the chat and we'll read, uh, you know, we'll, we'll read it out and uh, answer any questions that are in the chat or you can always come off mute and ask questions to for any clarifications or anything like that. Uh, with that, uh, you know, you can use the raise hand button on the uh, on the chat uh, when your screen that you may see uh, and, and just raise so we know, you know, we can start asking questions. A um, couple things with that raise of hand, can can you just give me an idea on how many of you have done this event before? I know it's been a couple of years and last year was not a great year. Uh, a lot of folks are not being there. So I just want to have have understanding of how many people did take it or have, have at least uh, done prior. OK, so it's a first time event for most of you guys. So I only see three hands, which means only only three people really did anything previously with this event. That's awesome. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and start sharing here. Uh, and let me go ahead and get started here. All right, so again, I'm just going to give you the highlights of the event. Uh, on what the event is and, you know, some of the rules, some of the clarifications that have come in past from uh, uh, other events, right? So uh, I just want to make sure you are, you know, you you can definitely go to the uh, Crash Car Expert page. If you're not been there, uh, macombso.org, and you can look up for this particular event. Uh, and let me make sure, oops, sorry. OK, I'm sorry. Uh, you know, basically this page has all the information you need. I've been doing this event almost over seven, eight years, maybe now a little bit over that. Uh, for past two years, we have not changed the rules, so the rules still remain the same, which was two years ago. Uh, so hopefully if you've done in past two years or three years, the rules are still the same. Uh, all the information related to the event is uh, you will find it up here. There are a couple of YouTube videos that I would highly encourage you to go over just to have a little understanding on what this event is and how it, uh, you know, how we, you know, what it really does for the events, right? Because this is one of the a little bit more, uh, you know, I wouldn't say complex event. It's just uh, the amount of things that are in the event, right, makes it a little harder. Uh, but it's it's a very fun event. Kids love the most, uh, and I like the most because kids enjoy the most there. Uh, there is a you know how to build a practice ramp. I would encourage you to talk to your schools uh, who has done it previously. The coaches, head coaches, they may have a practice ramp from before. So I would encourage you to just uh, talk to them and see if you can leverage that rather than having to build one. But if you have to build one, there is a, a, a you know whole details on how to build a ramp. Um, you know, practice materials. Uh, you can absolutely buy the quick start kit, which is available for the event from the Science Olympiad. If you need more than that, or if you don't want to purchase everything that is in the materials is from Walmart. So there are specifications on the size and the uh, details on each piece, which we'll, we'll walk you through, but you can always go to Walmart and get everything, uh, you know, that's that you, you may require for this event. Uh, other than the pine car and the ramp, right? Those are the only two things you can't. Uh, those are the two things that you will have to either get it from us or build one. Uh, awesome. So again, uh, I'm going to quickly jump on the clarification. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, clarification. So there are tons of FAQs here already from past six, seven years. Uh, you know, again, you know, you can you, you may see almost everything here. If you need clarification, you please feel free. You can you know go to the Science Olympiad website and submit an FAQ, 
and we will be happy to respond as soon as uh, I mean, I usually respond in less than 24 hours, so you should say, get a response pretty quickly. Uh, again, this is all what we already have from the previous uh, previous FAQs, so a lot of material already available to you. I want to go over some of the rules here, right? So you have a common understanding. Uh, you may already have seen uh, the rules. If not, I'll just walk you through quickly. Uh, there are two pieces to this. One is a build and one is a run. When I say build, we have 20 minutes to build the, the, the crash car, right? So car, we give you the pine car, uh, you know, and we give you all the materials. You don't need to bring anything to. Uh, when you come for the event, the only things you need to bring is things like scissors and uh, other things that are required, which is also listed here that what, what are the things you can bring. Uh, but other than that, we provide you the egg, we provide you the car, we provide you the ramp, and all the materials that's listed here, we provide you, and you just have to build within the 20 minutes. Once the build is complete, uh, you can do, you know, we'll provide you time to run the ramp, but uh, 20 minutes is the build time. Ramp time is 15 minutes, say it's, 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 it varies, right? It can, I mean, generally finish in, two minutes to five minutes to 30 minutes, whatever time it takes, there is no real time given to run the ramp, right? Uh, in past, you know, we give you, we have, when you come in the morning, kids will be lined up sitting on the floor, uh, you know, with their piece, we'll hand over the materials to them. Uh, everybody starts at the same time. So there is a time factor that is put in here, which is maximum of 20 minutes. Earlier you finish, Right, uh, that will be your tiebreaker, which is which is pretty important as we go. So you know, your you know, we give you 20 minutes doesn't mean you can you have to use the full 20 minutes. If you finish it in a minute, I've seen in past uh, teams have finished in less than a minute, minute and a half, and that's the tiebreaker when it comes to the tiebreaker piece of it. Uh, again, uh, you know, the materials. These are the materials that will be provided. And out of this material that's listed here, there'll be three things that can be eliminated. Up to three things does not mean has to be three, right? But the entire piece will be eliminated. So it's not going to be like, oh, I'm going to remove two bicycle cards or uh, one cotton ball, one for, I mean, I'm not going to do that, right? So it's either going to be all four cards that will not be available paper clips may not be available, or, uh, you know, cotton twines or twisted cotton twines. Will, so again, depends that day, right? I, there is nothing that will be said before that what's not going to be available th during, during the run or during the build. So when they come in, they'll get a set with a brown bag, which is always going to be there. Brown bag irrespective is going to be there. And there'll be things in the brown bag, which is going to be the same for everybody in that event so it's not going to be different same materials will be provided to everybody there could be up two three things it can be only one thing i may eliminate or two things or three things so uh, the elimination can be up to three things just to clarify that um once you have it you will be provided large grade a uh, grade a eggs right uh, always a question where do you bring eggs we don't know right so uh it may be from Costco, it may be from Meyer, it may be for Kroger, I don't know, right? We just go the night before and bring the eggs and make sure the eggs are in a good shape there uh, and secure it well enough. So, but it will be definitely a large grade A egg. Uh, that's just a clarification. Uh, so when you build a pine car, you will, in the beginning, when we give out materials, you will have an option either to get one egg or two eggs. Uh, Passenger egg or a driver egg, right? Is what, how we defined as. So driver egg is uh, one that we will, every student will get, or every every team will get. The second egg, right, is optional. You can take it. You can. You don't have to take it. If you think you're going to build uh, a structure, right, that will hold, that will be able to run the ramp, all three ramps, right, uh, with both the eggs. Yeah, absolutely. Now, 
said that there is no penalty in taking two eggs. So you decide to build one, but you know, you took both the eggs and you said, now I'm just going to build one instead of two, right? Uh, my structure so I can I can guarantee my all three runs with safety of my egg without breaking it, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, if you take both the eggs, it doesn't matter. It's not going to be penalized. There is no nothing wrong. So I recommend kids, hey, take both eggs. So uh, if you if you're not sure you're going to run it with one or two, because we won't give the egg later if you ask. Right. So if you want to take two eggs, keep one egg away. Uh, you don't have to use both the eggs. But if you and, and the eggs will be marked as driver and passenger. So you have to have a driver egg run every time. Passenger is an optional. So you decide, uh, you know, you, you will have three ramps that you're going to run. The first ramp, you can say, I only need to run with both the I need to run with both the eggs, but then you realize that your structure is a little, little you know, damaged, right? And you don't want to take chance where your eggs get broken. So you may say, my second and third, I'm just going to run with one egg, which is absolutely fine, no problems. But it has to be marked as driver is always the one that has to be ran. Uh, here are the things you can bring. Other than that, you cannot bring anything. Scissors, rulers, pencil, pens, uh, pliers, uh, no other tools will be allowed, uh, you know, during the build. Uh, again, a uh, lot of these things, there are quite a few, you can go through it. We'll give you 20 minutes, uh, you know, and, and once you complete the build, you will then, uh, everybody will complete the build between, let's say nine and 11, right? 20 minutes, two or maybe three, but most of the time, two sessions. Uh, obviously, I think we have like almost 65, 67 teams. So we'll be probably evening out based on the schedule. Uh, and then, you know, everybody will come for a run. We generally do first come first surveys. I mean, hey, you know what? We're not in a rush. We, we will have enough time from, let's say, 10.30 to uh, 2.30, right? You can come anytime and uh, run, your, run your car. Uh, in past, People just line up in the beginning and you'll see 40 teams waiting to make a run. Don't have to. If you see long lines, say, hey, I can come back based on your schedule because you got to run to another event. So completely flexible there. Uh, I am going to go over some of the uh, pieces here uh, just from a competition perspective. Uh, there will be three ramps. Uh, all three will be at a different angle, ranging from zero to 60. Uh, generally, I'll put it at anything between 35 to 55 or 58 sometimes, right? At an angle from a slope perspective. So again, that will be not known until you come to the event as to what angles we're going to do that three days, right? I mean, uh, those three ramps, what angles will be done during that day. Uh, so basically three three ramps, you will have to cross all three, right? And then the tiebreaker is going to be the, the time you took to build the structure. Uh, if you run through the first one and your egg breaks, you're prob you will be done with the event. One thing, if you are running with two eggs, drivers and passenger, if the passenger egg fails or breaks, you still have driver egg, which you are still alive to run on the second ramp. And same thing goes for the third one. But if your driver fails, you 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 are prob you're done with the, the you know run of the tournament, right? So uh, and I'll, I'll show you how it impacts from a scoring perspective. Uh, again, you come in, you run all three ramps, uh, you know, in, in sequence, there will be somebody helping you out. Uh, and basically you run, you complete all three with one egg, two egg. Uh, if you do, then the next level goes as a time breaker. So in past, we had almost 15% of the schools or teams making through all three ramps, which is very important because if all three, all 15% of the schools make through all three ramps, which then comes as a time breaker. So Faster you build, higher scores you get, right? So that makes it very important. Uh, all right. So again, uh, 
there are there are quite a few of those rules here you can go through uh you know as as your wish and you can i mean you know i want to give enough time for q a uh before that i want to put a little bit on the score side of it but i am available after two o'clock so if you have questions i can stay back i can answer your questions so don't have to be in a rush to ask questions uh put in the chat or you can always I, i'll stay as much time as needed because i don't have anything going on after this event uh, unless you guys have something and you have to move uh, you can obviously ask through the uh, q a if uh, all right the scoring is very important as i was mentioning again driver egg being the key part of it you will have run three ramps so once you build the structure it will be kept on the side nobody's allowed in the area where the structure is put in the kids or the team that took it will put it and they will be able to we don't touch the structure we don't help you picking up the structure we don't help anyways the team will have to do it uh, a couple things uh, interesting eggs if the egg breaks during the build or between the build and the run we do not replace egg that's completely your responsibility uh, in past people have brought in these small cartons uh you know half carton or whatever for eggs and put it in there so secure it and put it in the tray uh, kids put in the socks shoes a uh, lot of things number one very important to know the second thing is when they run let's say they are running ramp one once they complete the ramp one they run through they will have to bring the structure to me on the on the supervisor's stable and take the egg out to make sure the egg is not broken. It can be cracked as far as it's not leaking. You are still good with the scoring as well as good with going on the ramp, next ramp. The most important piece of what I've noticed is when kids try to take it out of the ramp, it either drops out of hands or slips and falls on the floor, on the table, and it cracks and breaks. Oh, highly recommend it. I'm going to get up here. You know, we have asked kids to take the t-shirts and hold it this way, right? So when they hold it, take it out here so it does not go down or drop or does not do any damage to the egg because it's the same egg that you're going to run on the second ramp and the third ramp. Uh, just as a guidance that what I've seen commonly, things happening across when, when they try to take the eggs out. Um, if the driver egg is intact, right, you get 100 points. Uh, if not, then obviously it's a zero point, right? But if you are using two egg, you will get an additional 50 points. There is a negative marking for the second egg that you take and if you run with it. So let's say ramp one, you decide to run, you know, driver and passenger. Your driver, you know, you ran it perfectly fine, but your passenger broke, which means you got 100, but you got negative 100 also, which means you back to zero. But the good news is you can still run on ramp two because your driver act was intact. And if you succeed here, then it, the score keeps on going. Now, if you su succeed on ramp one with both the eggs, obviously you see 100 plus 50 adds up to 150, and then you run on the next one. And you say, I don't want to run uh, my passenger. I just want to run the uh, driver. Perfectly fine, right? Uh, again, so the scoring is a little more complex, but think when you run the passenger egg, there are consequences of uh, if it breaks or bleeds or, you know, there are negative markings in there. Uh, but again, I, I, I'll be very honest, 15% 15, 15 of the teams made through all three ramps with both the eggs, right? Which means uh, your tie, tie breaker gets in and the time comes in. Awesome. So that's kind of a high level what I wanted to get through. I, I still want to leave some time uh, for any FAQs. So if you have any questions, feel free, come off mute, raise your hands so we don't talk across each other. Looks looks like nobody has any questions. I did that great of a job here. OK. <laughs> oh, there you go. All right, Hannah. Hi, um, I just had a question. This is Hannah's first time doing the Science Olympiad, so we're new. And I wanted to know once they get there and there's, you know, given the supply of materials, will they be given um, a list of instructions of like how to assemble the car? Is there like a certain protocol that they have to follow? 
No. So we will provide you the material and that's during the practice that you do uh, before the event is how you build your, your structure, right? Uh, basically, it's every structure is going to be different. We give you these materials and you have to build the structure with these materials. We don't tell you how to build, what to build. You can see previous examples, uh, some YouTube videos, stuff like that. Uh, but this building this structure will be entirely up to the team when they come down. Does that make? Yeah, thank you. Yep. So we will definitely provide you all the materials. We'll tell you, you know, what are the three things that are missing in the in the set of materials that is in the rule set. And you know, you may have practiced with paper clips, and we eliminated the paper clips. That may be a little tough for the, the teams, right? Because they practice all the time. So our our recommendation, you know, try to build variety of it. So if there are no paper clips during the event, hey, that's perfectly fine. I can I can go on my you know second part that I build without paper clips and build that kind of a structure. So that's a reason why a practice is very important here on building different levels different kinds of structure with different things rather than say, oh, I'm just going to build, build one structure and these are the things that I'm going to use. And and I've seen where you know teams come and say, oh, wait, I was so used to doing with clips and now there are no clips. How am I going to build it? Uh, yeah, so make sure you practice enough with different, different uh, options there. Anything else? Any other questions? Do kids have all to use all the materials? No, great question, Laura. Kids do not have to use all the materials, right? Uh, you, you, I mean, we give you, you don't use it, or uh, keep it, or, or, you know, just keep it in the tray. So one, one more thing I wanted to mention, and that brings up a point here is, what happens is nothing, when you're building a structure, nothing should be touching the wheels, Right or during running the ramp, when you put on the ramp, nothing should be touching the ramp. So when you come for inspection to me on the on the uh, structure, there will be I will be making sure there's nothing touching the wheels nor the ramp, and then I'll give you okay to go run it. Now what happens is, you know, to make it fast, to make it stop, uh, you know, there's a string that's. Uh, that's you know not tied properly or a straw that's touching the wheels. Now what happens in that case when you come to run, you will get two minutes, but that two minutes gets added to your total time. So if you build a structure in let's say five minutes, right? You will get automatically two minutes added to your time. Now you can take that two minutes to go fix it, cut the string, whatever you want to make it that it does not touch the ramp and stuff, right? So, so that's a very important piece to know is when you're when you're uh, coaching, make sure there's nothing touching the wheels when you're building a structure. Make sure they're cutting everything, nothing is touching. Otherwise, they just get penalized for it. But, and that's one of the reasons why I say if you have extra material, leave it in the tray that we give you. So if anything of that sort happens, you have extra material to go rebuild it, right? Uh, but that's only and only before running the first ramp. You cannot modify the structure once you ran ramp one. So after ramp one, if something comes out or gets loose, it stays out. You cannot go rebuild it uh, you know, from that perspective. I hope I answered that question, Laura. If not, uh, let me know and I'll clarify it. Scott. Yes, uh, good afternoon. How much guidance are we coaches allowed to provide to the uh, students? Awesome, great question, which generally I covered it up front, but I did not. When the student is doing a build, zero guidance. We will be, probably you'll be a little bit away. You can see it in past, they did not allow to see it, but in last, six years since I've been, seven years that I've been running, I allow the coaches to see so they can improve, they can guide them after the fact. During the event, there will be no guidance given to the teams. Once they are in the event, you can watch, enjoy. Any point, if we see teams or coaches or head coaches or parents trying to guide them, that team will be disqualified immediately, right? So we highly recommend 
do all the coaching before they start the event. Once the event is started, uh, let the kids enjoy their, their event. But that's a great question to ask because I usually cover that. And I will, when you do the event, usually I do announce that in the event that the coaching is done. Please do not help the kids. Let them do and run their own. Uh, once they are done, you can go back and coach them what they did right or wrong. Now, those that's the reason why we have those practice events where it will be exactly the same as a real event. So when, when they complete it and you see something, you can coach them during the practice, after the practice event saying, hey, what are the things you did wrong? So you can make it right. Uh, awesome, that great question. Uh, I hope that I answered that one. Uh, there is a question. Do you typically buy a few cars so you can practice over and over again? Uh, absolutely. You, I, I would suggest, right? Uh, now again, you know, you can, you know, live with one car, uh, but again, these are built, built manually, right? It's not like uh, it's built in the factory and comes in. So there may be things that get loose and stuff. Now, when you come for the event, we will tell you to make sure uh, your wheels are running, everything looks in the car right, right? And we will give you an option, even if your egg is a little bit cracked and you say, I don't like this egg. You only have an option in the beginning, right? Before you start building it, you can exchange for anything. We'll ask you if you think, you know, my egg is too soft and I think it will break, uh, which is, you know, I've seen that happening before. Uh, and they'll say, I need another egg and we'll exchange eggs or even the structure or, or the pine card that we give you. We'll be happy to uh, uh, exchange that. But from a practice perspective, I would suggest a couple of cars, uh, you know, so you can build a couple of models, two, three, whatever you want to build and and kind of practice with, uh, you know, at the same time. So, yeah, absolutely. Uh, can you get, can you explain the rules for getting the eggs in and out of the car? Awesome, great idea. Uh, I, I don't, I wish uh, I had an example of it, you know. So, I'm going to try and see if I can explain you a little better here. You will assume this is my car that I built, right? And, and I think there's a video up there too, which you can watch uh, on how to take it out. This is a car structure I built. I go run through the ramp. Once I'm run through the ramp, I will pick it up and the egg has to be in the ramp. As not when I say I, the team will be picking it up and bringing it to my table. Once they are on my inspection table, they will take the egg on a free flow basis. When I say free flow, you can't put your hands into the structure and take out the egg and show me, hey, egg is fine. No, that will be called as disqualified, right? They will have to let it loose with their hands. So basically they can just, you know, drop it. And that's where I was referencing it. You know, there are two, team, two uh, kids in the team right one holds it and the other one drops it so when it comes down it comes here and you have enough cushion right and it doesn't fall on the uh, on the ground on the table or or cracks up right so again but it has to be a free flow no hands taken in the egg while running the ramp when you run the ramp it comes down the egg has to be in the structure right if it comes out of the structure it is still called as uh, failed or, you know, basically uh, ramp is done, right? Because it has to be in the structure that, you know, you just can't, oh my God, if, if, even if it's not broken, it got to be in the structure. It cannot be out, right? Otherwise you basically fail and you take it, you can't just take it and put it back, right? Or you, you got to come to me and take it out uh, like a free flow there. Awesome, uh, but great question there. What is the date? For the practice event, uh, there are some dates here that's put it in the web page right here, uh, and you can look at our practice tournament schedule, and you can basically tells you there are March 5th, March 22nd, and 12th based on the on the district that you are from, Chippewa Valley, Utica, and South Macomb. I'm not sure. I think Lance News has been canceled. So again. Uh, this is something you can definitely bring it up during your two o'clock with the uh, head coach uh, to say which one uh, you are part of and which one you want to attend. But I think you have to be part of the district to be attending that. Uh, again, that's something the the you know 
uh, the Science Olympiad Committee will work on. I'm going to uh, pipe in really quick. Yeah. If you are a part of the Lance Cruz district, you're going to be joining the South Macomb practice tournament. Oh, awesome. So 12th of March. Mm -hmm. So it's it's canceled here, but it's still part of the March 2nd. OK, Perfect. that works. Thanks, Nicole. Uh, I do see one more question and then I'll come back to you, Tony. Uh, can they scope the egg back into the structure if it comes out when it hits the bottom of the ramp? Uh, scope with the no, no, they cannot. As I was mentioning, you cannot take it out. So I, I did cover in my previous one. You cannot take it out and put it back. Uh, you know, once the egg is out of the structure, uh, it remains out. Scope without using hands, but using the structure. No, not even structure. You can. So here, here is a great scenario that had hap happens every every single time. Right? It comes, it hits the bottom of the ramp, and the structure falls. Half the egg is inside and half the egg is outside. Yes, you can scoop it and make sure it's inside. If it goes out, unfortunately, it's it's kind of done, right? But if it's half inside the structure, half outside, just go scoop it. It's happened. I mean, every year it's happened at least dozens of times where you know egg is coming well after it hits the bottom. It structure falls down and half is inside, half is outside. So you, you can scoop it up and do it. All right, Tony, uh, you had a question? Well, let's see, I forgot. Okay, uh, we do the first run, we come over, get inspected, and then the kids reload the egg or eggs. Mm -hmm. Now, when reloading, um, driver in, passenger, is there, can we put in, I thought in a video I may have seen, a buffer between the two without kids having to, Okay, go ahead. No, you can modify. You cannot modify the structure once the ramp or once the structure is built, or once you run the first ramp, right? Your build time is done when you start the ramp. Even after you complete the build time, you cannot modify the structure, right? Okay, I was just thinking possibly a buffer between driver passenger, but that cannot be reinserted after run one. It's just that's gotcha. correct. Thank that's you. correct. The structure will remain the same. You can put both the eggs or decide, hey, my buffer came out. So now instead of putting two eggs, I may only use one egg because the chances are both the eggs will you know hit each other and break both, right? So again, that's up to your design, right? How you build it, but you cannot modify to answer that question simply. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Uh, any other questions? Anything else? Did I, did I miss any questions in the chat? Uh, Yeah, so you and, and like uh, Nicole mentioned, you can purchase the kits. Feel free. Uh, the kit, I think, and Nicole, correct me, I think there are enough to run what 10, 15, 20, some some number, right? Uh, of run of practice runs to practice structure, to build a structure. Yes, we have two different kits. We have one that is like a normal kit, and I think you can get 10, 10 mm -hmm. builds out of it. Um, and then I, I might be mistaken, but I know you get you get a handful from the first kit and then the second kit is like the the duplex kit where you get double everything. Right, so absolutely you can you can look into that. Uh, you, like I said, you get everything. It's just painful to go. I mean, you know, the team still goes to Walmart and gets and we break it up and put it in there, right? Uh, you have an option to go to Walmart and get everything and put it in there too. So again, uh, all right, Mary, you had a question there. I uh, don't think we can hear you, Mary. Hannah, how about you? Hi, um, I just had a quick question. If you're doing two of the eggs, you go back to the, to the supervisor for the judging. Do they like put their hand over and drop one egg and then the other, or do they tilt the car and have both of the drag eggs drop simultaneously? Great, great question. Uh, however you want to do, right? However you want to do. It got to be a free flow, right? It's not you drop one and then pull it out from the other one, right? Uh, I have seen both scenarios. Uh, generally speaking, what I've seen more from teams is doing one egg at, at a time. S the reason is you try to put both the eggs at the same time. It will basically collide and have a chance to break. You don't want that to happen, right? So what they do is take one egg, 
take it out, show me, put it on the side, take another one out, take it out, show me, good to go, ramp, ramp two. Uh, now, if you want both of them going out at the same time, you can, if that works for you, uh, it's completely up to your design. That does, does that answer your question there? Yes, okay. thank you. Okay, yeah, and, and making sure, right, uh, you know, if you're using, uh, uh, you know, one thing I've noticed, right, uh, which I, again, I should have mentioned earlier is, I usually give them three, four times to wiggle it, right? I just can't give them like, you know, two minutes just to wiggle it and take the egg out, which means which means you put in so tight that the egg is, you know, uh, I, I don't allow that, right? To be very honest, yes, they come and the egg is not getting a free flow because there are some packings done in. What they can do is wiggle it three, four times. Great, no problems. I don't have an issue with that. You can, you just can't go on wiggling, 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 trying to take the egg out, right? Uh, and in, in the most part, when you try to do that, the structure will be getting more damaged. So I highly recommend you, when you practice, do like three or four, let it come. If it comes, awesome. If it does not, uh, you know, try with things that you can, right? So that's a very important piece to get it. I, when they're taking out, I don't allow them to. I've seen kids uh, and teams where they come in, they try and take it out, and then they take their hand and try to push it so the egg comes out. I will not allow them. It got to be pure free flowing. So if I have my structure here, I got to do this way and not hold it this way and try to, you know, kind of uh, push it around and take the egg out. I won't allow that. Uh, just for that clarification purpose, because I've seen all the time they come in and they try to push their egg and try to take it out with their hands. And they say, we are still doing a free flow, but they're still pushing with their hands. So uh, a good clarification there. Thanks for pointing that out. Uh, any any other questions? Anything else? Um, Amish, I just checked the website for the quick start kits. And we are only selling the double quick start kit. However, the price is reduced to $20. And it ha comes with enough materials for 20 practice builds. OK, that's awesome. And, yes. and that is awesome. And I, I, uh, just to you know, know, right? Uh, it's just easier to get the kit, what I tell everybody, right? Just because you go Walmart and buy the 20 things that are, or whatever, 12 things that are required, you'll end up paying probably more, right? So if you're just planning on practicing, uh, you know, take the first 20, you need more, go purchase more, but just easier because everything is given to you there. Uh, there was a question on the, uh, thanks, Nicole. There was a question on the chat here. You will still allow tapping to get it out. When you say tapping, uh, I say I, I can allow wiggling, right? I can't allow like, hey, push it and try to, you know, I'm here. No, I will not allow that, right? Uh, I will allow the wiggling part of it for your structure to come, uh, egg to come out, but I can go on doing this to eggs to come out, right? Because it's got to be a free flow. Uh, so generally, you know, I don't allow tapping. Uh, it's the same as wiggling, so I would suggest try to use the wiggling method to take it out. Uh, will the ramp car and material be provided in the practice tournament or absolutely it will be provided uh, during those uh, three tournaments that I was just mentioning here. Uh, you will, we will have the ramp that is the same ramp that will be used in the final one in May. Uh, absolutely to the same ramp. Uh, it will be, uh, the you know, the angles will be different, right? So if you come to Chippewa Valley, and if you're part of the Chippewa Valley and you got, let's say, you know, 40, 50, 58, right? Three angles does not mean South Macomb or Land Cruise or any other district will have it. So just to clarify, it will be different every time. Uh, so, yes, it will be provided during the tournament. It, the, it, treat that as your final tournament because it's going to be exactly same pattern, same way. Uh, you know, the practice is going to be ran as the final one. Uh, awesome. Uh, any other questions that I'm missing? I know because there are a couple of hands. Mary, you had a question there again. Go for it. Yeah, I'm sorry. I had technical difficulties. Um, oh. I, I asked the question earlier. Uh, if, if we get both eggs in the beginning, 
do mm -hmm. we have to run both eggs on ramp one or can we hold off on the second egg until ramp three? You can hold off on this second. That's a great question. And every time I forget the answer to that, I think what I allow is I do allow it to be honest. Uh, let, me, let me get back. Uh, if you don't mind putting that question, uh, I think there that is one on the uh, uh, on the rules. But I, as far as I remember it, what I I, I think I do allow it. Uh, you you don't have to run. Yes. So that's how the scoring is, right? So let's say in ramp ramp one. You don't run with the. Uh, you only run with the driver egg, right? Ramp two, you decide you want to run driver and passenger both. You can definitely do that. Okay, so we can start with one and work our way up to two if they chose. Yes. Now, the likelihood. Again, I mean, obviously, it's all your design. You know, everything depends. But the likelihood, right? If you even survive, there will be some damage done after running ramp one and two. Uh, so, you know, likelihood of that would be low. But again, that's completely up to you. Yes, you can do that. Uh, I see a question from David. Yes, sir. I had a question for Nicole. I heard you mention purchasing the kits. I received my kit from the school and it was missing the car. Missing the main ingredient. So I don't think the car is included, but I'll let Nicole speak on it. Um, no, the car is not included in that. Um, it says right on, actually, I'm looking at the website right now just to make sure before I give you inaccurate information. It says everything that is included, it is all of the materials. You do have to purchase the car separately. Correct. Yes. Okay, thank you. Yep. yep. And they're on they're available on the website. They're five dollars a piece. Yep. And and I was looking at five dollars not changed since the last eight years, nine years. <laughs> right. So I always remember that. Uh awesome. Any any other questions? Or uh there was one here from Jenny. Uh can you verify the number of items that may be taken out? It's up to three items, right? Three full items. I doesn't mean it has to be three. I can only I can only say I'm not going to include cotton balls. Everything else will be there. Or I can say I'm not going to include cotton balls, paper clips, bicycle cards. I can decide up to three items just for clarification there. How many cards do normally people buy to practice with? Depends on the practice level, how much you practice, right? Uh, like, like I was mentioning earlier, uh, I mean, then you can always purchase additional cars. And I think there is a uh, there's a store on Vendike, if I'm not mistaken. That's where you can also purchase and build too. But I, you know, I generally like to say two or three would be the good number to have it, just because you can build various different models and you know try to keep one model versus. Uh, just completely destroying and you know uh, trying to rebuild uh, over and over again. You can have different models, but again, you'll have more practice to rebuild. But at least three different prototype, if you will, to kind of gauge you know which one would would be good. Uh, again, it all depends on the practice level and how much you want to do. Awesome, uh, David. You had another question there. Yes, sir. Just for everyone in the group, uh, the store in Van Dyke, uh, they currently do not have any cars. They are expecting okay. some more in, uh, in about a week or so. OK, thank you. So. Thank you for that clarification. That's awesome. Yes, sir. Yeah, it and, and shows, I don't know. Uh, it shows probably, on our website we have approximately 42 available for purchase. In our stock. Oh, awesome. That's even better. Run, <laughs> get some. Right. <laughs> oh, no, just so uh, and, and that, you know, uh, it's good to have more than less. So, uh, what's the store name? I think that is also on the website. Uh, some toy, hobby, something, something. Uh, there is, if you look at it, uh, you can probably find it right from here. And right here, additional cars. 
are you looking for? great right there actually it says here yeah great lakes hobby pine car uh this is a store right on van dyke and Utica. so it's, it's everything is available on the website uh anything else i know david said that. oh okay uh did i miss any questions nicole or anybody else that uh anything else for clarifications i don't nope, see it i i do not see any additional questions you you got to all of them in the chat and i feel you addressed everybody who raised their hand awesome thanks a lot oh uh, awesome so looking forward to your you know your practice event uh feel free let us know if you have questions feel free to send it through the faq and we'll be happy to address them as it comes. Uh, there are a lot of FAQs. I would highly suggest to read it. There are videos I would highly suggest to. Now, there are some legacy videos, right? You may come across where they are showing literally taking the uh, eggs out of the car. I'm making it very clear that's why that, you know, I mean, sometimes you don't have control over the YouTube and other videos, right? So just making sure it has to be a free flow is the most important part of it. Uh, when is the practice event again? Uh, depending on your district, uh, you know, you can. Uh, if you are Chippewa Valley, it's March 5th. If you are Utica, it's March 22nd. Or if you are South Macomb, it's March 12th. Awesome. It's available right on the home page of our website. Perfect. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So uh, with that, uh, folks, thank you for your time today and looking forward uh, to some great uh, build on the structures. Do not hesitate. Uh, you know, feel free. Questions are always welcome and uh, have a great week, weekend and look forward to the event and some fun with kids. Uh, thank you.